All right, this is 10 Minute Technique, the series where I show you an easy writing technique you can take away and add to your own writing in just 10 minutes or about 10 minutes. In this one, I wanna talk about perspective, what each of the writing perspectives are and what they're good for, so that by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which one is gonna be best for your story. If this is brand new to you, all I mean by perspective is the angle from which your story is told. There's three main types. First person, which is your character's internal thoughts and feelings. On the page it says, I did this, I did that. It's writing from the point of view of your character and talking about what they can see and hear and feel. Then the second person, which is rarely seen and kind of weird, and what that does is attempt to take you, the reader, and make you the main character of the story. So it'll tell things through your eyes rather than through a character's. So for example, it'll say, you drove to the store, you walked through the door. Didn't mean for that to rhyme. Then there's the more traditional third person, which is looking over your character's shoulder or looking down on them. It's a point of view or a perspective that has a bit of distance to it. That's the three main types of perspective in a nutshell. So let's talk about them in a bit more detail so that you can pick which one or which ones you need for your story. You can use multiple. First person then, straight from the character's eyes. I went there, I ate ice cream, I barfed in the car park. First person's great for detailing emotions and making your reader feel really connected to your character. It's also great for a more personal, conversational style of writing because it's just a person recounting their story. The best thing about first person though, in my opinion, is that it allows you to create a really strong, recognisable character voice. It's not so great for giving detailed description because people don't tend to think or talk that way. When was the last time you described anything that was in front of you? It's also not great for giving a wider view of the action because people tend to miss things, they're not always aware of everything that's going on in the room with them. Where other characters are, what they're doing, what's just been said. A first person perspective that picks up on all of that would be difficult to make believable. A very recognisable example of first person narration comes from The Catcher in the Rye. Love it or hate it, you can't deny that it has a very clear character voice. Here's an example. I can't stand that stuff, drives me crazy. Makes me so depressed I go crazy. I hated that goddamn Elkton Hills. There's a clear voice and a limited perspective, very strong first person. If you're writing a very character-driven book or a very protagonist-driven book, first person might be your best bet. Here's a variation on first person that I think is pretty interesting. It's called first person periphery, and it's exactly that. It's first person narration, but not from the protagonist's point of view, from the point of view of someone else on the periphery. A great contemporary example of this is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, where the first person periphery narrator is death. Which in turn brings me to the subject I'm telling you about tonight, or today, or whatever the hour and colour. It's the story of one of those perpetual survivors, an expert at being left behind. So it's not the main character, it's talking about the main character. The Book Thief is fantastic, by the way, if you've never read it, I'd highly recommend it. That moves me on to second person, the least often used and the most controversial of perspectives. Second person attempts to bring you as a reader into the story by often referring to you. You become the main character in a sense, and it always gets compared to those choose your own adventure books from decades ago. Because it's a bit more specialist, Finding the advantages of second person narration is a little bit more difficult than first or third. But it's definitely good for doing something a little bit different, surprising the reader and making them feel like part of the story. Second person doesn't get used very much because it is quite often disliked by readers. I think there are better ways of making your reader feel like part of the story than just by attempting to pick them up and plop them down in it. I personally don't actually find it very immersive as a perspective, and the constant you, you, you can get really repetitive. I've said this before countless times on my channel already, but I did write a full-length novel in second person once, and it was hard to get through when I came to edit it. A better example of a full-length novel in second person is Bright Light's Big City. You're not the kind of guy who would be at a place like this at this time in the morning, but here you are, and you cannot say that the terrain is entirely unfamiliar although the details are fuzzy. If that passage doesn't immediately bother you, then that might be a good book to read to get an idea of how second person works. So on to third person. Familiar, effective third person. Not that I have favourites. Third person is maybe the most commonly used or the most traditional perspective for a book. It's over the shoulder or it's from above, it's from outside of your character. It's he, she, they, it, rather than I or you. 
How a first person perspective can almost be a character in itself, a third person perspective usually isn't. Third person is great for getting distance from characters, for telling a wider story, it's really good for description. You can also still show a character's internal thoughts through third person, but you're just not limited to them like you are in first person. It also tends to be a more neutral voice for your readers to follow along with. If they don't like a first person voice, it's very difficult to get away from that and get through a whole book of a voice that you don't like, but that's less likely to happen with third person because it takes a backseat from the action and it doesn't have too much personality compared to first. As with first person, there's loads of great examples of third person as well, but I'll take one from one of my favourite books, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. August and Kirsten set off as quickly and quietly as possible in the direction of the sound. The forest was a dark mass on either side, alive and filled with indecipherable rustlings, shadows like ink against the glare of moonlight. There's a few variations of third person as well, depending on how much you want your audience or your readers to know about the story. There's third person limited, where the narration only knows as much as the main character does. This is great for books with just one character's perspective. It also works really well if you want to surprise your reader with secrets and discoveries. Then there's third person omniscient, which is exactly what it sounds like. The narrator has knowledge of all things within the book, and it has a terrific amount of hindsight over the entire story. This could be good for stories set in the past, or for recounting past events in a character's life. The thing to remember about perspective is that you can play to your strengths. If you're writing a really emotional story, then a first person perspective might work better. If your story is grand in scale, third person might fit, but it's always worth considering what you find easiest to write. If it's much easier for you in third person, you can write an emotional story that way. And if you prefer first person for your fast paced action scenes, there's nothing wrong with that. And the thing is, if it doesn't work, you can just change it later in editing. Don't let picking your perspective stop you from putting pen to paper or fingers to keyboards. Like I said in my Andy Weir video earlier this week, it's up there in case you want to watch it, you can switch between perspectives at will depending on what you need to tell your story however you want to tell it. That's something I really want to practice myself and get better at. Don't be afraid to experiment, even with second person. While it didn't work for me, it might for you. And even if it doesn't, you'll learn something, like you always do with everything new. My aim with this channel is to support other writers and to help them develop their writing as I develop mine. I want to help you tell your best story, so if that sounds useful or you want to be a part of that, consider hitting the subscribe button for more videos like this every week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next 10 minute technique.